Hey there, it's Jade here. And for today's lesson in your social media blueprint training, I want to talk to you about an overview of how you put everything together on social media. So I want you to start thinking about your brand, where you want to be positioned on social media, who your audience is, and where they're actually going to be hanging out. Because Social media marketing isn't just a matter of getting a link and throwing it out there and hoping for the best. You need to actually have a strategy and you need to know where is the best place to put your content, where you're going to be most comfortable putting your content and where your audience is most likely to come and look for your content. So you might think that you need to go out and put your brand on every social media platform there is and you've probably seen all these really big brands that have established themselves on every social media platform. But you've got to remember you're just starting out and if you try to start building a Facebook account, an Instagram account, a YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Quora, a blog, uh, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, whatever else there is, Snapchat, WhatsApp. So it's overwhelming just thinking of all the different social media platforms. Imagine if you were trying to put yourself on every single one of them when you're just starting out. You're going to get overwhelmed, you're going to get confused, you're going to get scared, and you're probably going to want to throw your laptop out and quit because Nobody expects that of you and nobody can succeed if they're trying to do that many things at once. So what I'm here to do today is to teach you to keep it simple and to think about where your strengths are, where your audience is going to be looking for you and what your actual message should be and where is the best place to put that. So before we go into too much, I just want to actually share with you some stats. And these are from back in May 2017, but it's the most recent ones I could find. And it's about who has the most users on each social media platform. So think about this. Facebook has 1.28 billion daily active users. Instagram has 700 million daily active users. YouTube has over 1 billion daily active users and it actually reaches more 18 to 34 year olds than any cable network in the United States. And Twitter has 317 million monthly active users. Now, can you imagine working with that many people in your business? You don't need millions of customers. So you don't need to be on 20 platforms to try and target billions of customers. You just need to stick to one or two platforms which are going to have more than enough customers for you to reach out to. So this is why you need to think about where your strengths are and who you want to talk to. And the other thing you need to think about is what you actually want your brand to be. Now, we're going to have other people going into these things in more depth, so I'm not going right into it, but I just want you to start thinking about it. So, do you just want to use your name, or do you want to come up with a quirky, fun name that people are going to remember and that they're going to know you by? So, start thinking about, again, it depends on your audience, what platform you're using, who you want to be, who you want to attract, what your interests are. What, you, what your message is, that's going to come into what your brand is. And when you are an online entrepreneur and you're promoting these sort of products, um, you can just use your name as your brand. Don't feel like you need to come up with these really cool brands because you are your brand. But having a really cool brand can also do really great things for you depending on your niche and depending on your purpose. So it's really important to be clear on what you want to achieve. And this is why I want you to start thinking about these things before you just go out there and start marketing. Because a lot of people think that it's just about putting stuff on social media and then that's all you have to do. But you really need to be a lot more organized than that. And if you're organized and if you've thought about it properly, 
it'll be very simple to establish yourself. And that's how your business grows and that's how your brand grows. Because if you think about it, all these big brands that you're probably thinking about that have all these platforms, they've been at it for a long time. They had to start from somewhere as well. And when they started, they didn't start on every platform either. So play to your strengths and play to where your customer is going to be. And that's how you're going to be successful. Now, what I'm going to do now is actually show you some examples and get you thinking about why these people are on certain platforms and start to think about where you want to be. And I'm just going to show you one really cool tool before I do that. So I know I said that um, you don't want to be on every platform to begin with, but this is a really cool site. It's called namecheck.com, um, N-A-M-E-C-H-K.com. Um, and what it does is, so say you're using a brand name and you want to create a website and all of that sort of stuff. You might have the domain, but then you might go to create social media accounts and find that that name's actually taken. So what this site does is it actually searches everything on the internet. And as you can see, there's way more social media platforms that I even than what I even mentioned. So if you try to be on every one of them, it's going to get overwhelming. But what this can do is to start putting things in motion for down the track when you do want to expand. You can claim the names on the platforms that you know you are going to want to use and that way you won't run into issues later on where you might find that someone's now used that name on a platform and you can't take it. So what this does is this searches all of the internet and the blacked out ones are the ones that have actually already got that. And then the ones that are green means it still hasn't been taken. So if you know you want to be on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and a blog eventually, then what you could do is you could go and just create an account on each of these in your name, not have to do anything else, but just grab the name so that it's yours and you've got that account. Um, so that's just a little cool tool I wanted to throw in for you to consider using. Um, but let's get into some social media accounts now. So the first one I'm going to start with is Facebook pages. Um, and I'm most people have a Facebook page. And I think regardless of what other platform you're going to be using, Facebook is such a strong platform and it does have the most active users every day. And especially if you're doing a social media business like ours, we run our groups on Facebook, we run all our team stuff on Facebook. You're going to have to be on Facebook. So you can choose different ways to establish yourself on Facebook. You can have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, use your Facebook profile. I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of that stuff, but you're going to need to be on Facebook in some capacity. So think about how you can tie that in with the one or two other main platforms you want to use. But Facebook is going to be a platform. Now, the reason I want to show you Gary V is because he's a very successful entrepreneur. He's a great um, motivator and he posts heaps of inspiring, thoughtful stuff. And you can either love him or hate him. But he is very good on video and he has established a very strong brand around video. Now, recently, he's obviously moved into other things like podcasts and Instagram and all that stuff. But he established himself through his very quick videos. So he's got a YouTube channel because obviously he's on video and he does his daily videos. So he's been doing this for that long, 395 days of daily videos. So you can think about what a strong brand he's established now. And he wants to be on YouTube because that's his strength. His strength is talking in front of a camera. He needs to be seen and he needs to be speaking because that's how he motivates people. So he's on YouTube and then that's linked with Facebook. So he has a quite a large following on Facebook and a very large following on YouTube. So this is his two main platforms because that's his strengths. Same goes for Prince. Yeah, I'm not, I never know how to pronounce that. 
Um, it should be simple because it's just two letters, but I never know. Um, but he, again, he's all about inspiring and thought-provoking videos. And he loves creating content that people are going to want to share. So, of course, he's going to be on YouTube because he's all about videos. But he's also going to be on Facebook because Facebook is the biggest platform. And Facebook is such a strong platform for people to share his content. So he creates these really great videos that people can then just click a button and share. And he's getting more and more people. He's growing his audience every day and he's inspiring thousands of people by what he puts on camera. And he's very, very big on videos. So he's obviously picked the right platform for him. You wouldn't see him on Instagram because that's not his thing. You, you might see him on there, but that's not the platform he's known for. He's known for his videos. So these are the two platforms you're going to find him on. Then if you think about it, what sort of accounts tend to really do well on Instagram? You've got your foodie accounts, your travel accounts, your fitness accounts, all these ones that look really, really beautiful. So your entrepreneurs that are doing these motivational videos and talking about business each day, they're not really going to want to be on Instagram or that's not going to be their main platform because Instagram is about photos. Instagram is about sharing beauty and art and like people love to look at Instagram because they love the look of it. So the, the accounts that do really well on there are the ones that look really incredible. So your travel accounts always do well. And World of Wanderlust is one of my favorites, so I just thought I'd share hers. Um, so you can see, it's a very beautiful account, and she's all about travel. So she's picked the right platform for her because it's a great platform to share your travels. And you can get such beautiful images when you're traveling, so why wouldn't you share that with the world through the number one photo platform? And of course, she's a travel blogger, so then that's linked in with her blog. So you need to think about what you like. Do you love being on video? Make a YouTube channel. Do you love writing and expressing yourself through words? Have a blog and link it to an Instagram account. Or don't link it to an Instagram account. Just have a blog and link it to your Facebook. Um, think about where you want to be. Uh, are you a photographer? Use Instagram. Are you a professional? Use LinkedIn or Twitter. Think about who you are and what you love because when I started, I always loved taking photos. So it was Instagram for me. Whereas if someone said to me, you have to make a YouTube channel, I nearly crawled up and curled in a ball and was like, no, nah, I'm never working online because I'm terrified of videos. Now I've obviously changed, but this is what, so this is what I mean about growing as you go along and becoming more confident and then wanting to establish yourself on other platforms. Now I have opened up a YouTube channel, but at the start, that was not what I wanted to do. So think about where you want to start. You don't need to think about all these things in the future right now. You just want to slow it down and think about your two platforms you want to start on. Um, so obviously I mentioned Twitter as well. Um, so I just wanted to show you this lady on Twitter. So she's a really good entrepreneur and she's a social media strategist and she actually shares heaps of tips on how to be successful on social media. So she's actually a cool person to follow. Um, and she's established herself across all platforms. But I just wanted to show you someone that's on Twitter because Twitter's not really a platform that I, I follow. Um, but obviously because she targets businesses, Twitter is a good platform for her because some businesses don't have the time to be watching long videos or reading long posts, so they just want to see her quick, snappy posts on Twitter. Um, but she does have a blog and she does have a good YouTube channel and she does have Facebook as well. So she's more established and she's really got her brand down pat. Um, same with this guy, Kerwin Ray. He's also a, he helps businesses grow. So he's a business strategist. So again, Twitter is a really good platform for him because his audience are people with fast-paced lives. They don't want to sit there reading long posts. They want to just quickly scroll through and go, yep, this is what I need, this is what I don't need. 
So if they then find interest in what he's posting, they can go on and pick to choose to look at him on another platform where they can get more information. But if they're just looking for fast, snappy content, they're going to get that from him on Twitter. Um, and then there's LinkedIn. Now, I can't really vouch or say much about LinkedIn because I only used it when I was at the bank and I actually had to quickly create a new profile to even be able to look at LinkedIn because it was obviously linked to my old bank email and I couldn't get into my LinkedIn account. Um, but as you can see, LinkedIn is a very professional place. Um, you don't get all the fluffy stuff where you get to see what people are up to every day. It's very professional. It's very to the point. It's very corporate. So if that's what you're going for, then that's when you would use LinkedIn. Um, but again, if you love sharing videos, if you love sharing photos, LinkedIn isn't going to be the platform for you. This is more about sharing informative articles and connecting with people on a professional level and sharing your knowledge and value. Um, it's not really the sort of place where you just share your happy, fun lifestyle. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's the different platforms you can consider using. So I hope that gives you a bit of a better understanding of which platform you want to use and why and to get you to think in simpler terms and not get too overwhelmed. Um, because I know when I first started out, I got very overwhelmed because I thought I had to do everything. But you don't. Just do the few things that you feel comfortable with as you feel comfortable on those platforms, then expand to other ones. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is how you can go one step further. And this comes once you have established your brand a bit. You can actually start to monetize your accounts and not just through promoting something like your affiliate offer with Digital Altitude, but you could actually work with companies on a sponsorship level or have companies pay you for your posts. Um, so I just want to show you what that actually means. So this is one of my favorite YouTube uh, travel channels. These guys are called High on Life. Um, and you've probably noticed when you look at all these different platforms that I've shown you, everyone has really great uh, channel art and it all fits perfectly with the platform that they're on. Now we're going to actually teach you how to do that sort of design work in one of our later videos. So if you're wondering how to do this and if you've struggled with that sort of stuff before, don't worry because we are going to cover that for you in our design and um, it's a really fun video so have fun when you watch that. Um, but yeah, so these guys are travel vloggers. So they do really great travel videos but you'll notice that a lot of their content is actually sponsored content. So not in the sense that they get paid for their videos, which they probably do as well, but in the sense that they've worked, they've combined with other companies and these companies have either given them free products or given them free travel in exchange for them then sharing videos about it. Because if you think about it, so these guys have 415,000 subscribers almost. And these subscribers obviously pay a lot of attention to them because they get a lot of likes on their videos. It's a lot cheaper for a company to work with an influencer and let them stay in their hotel for free or give them a free backpack or um, a free meal or something like that than it is for them to advertise on all these different platforms with such a changing industry and so many different places to advertise, it works a lot better for companies to actually work with influencers. So when you start to establish yourself on a platform and you get a good name for yourself, this is when you can start working with brands as well. And you don't need to have 415,000 followers. You can actually have a lot less than that and still have brands want to work with you. There's different ways to do it. Um, but how you can actually tell that there's sponsored content. So I'm just going to give you an example here. Seconds. I'm going to show you how our team makes over So you'll see this video is called Luxury Villa in Paradise, Cheaper Than Living at Home. And when you look at the video, it's talked about how they've been to this cute little surf village in Mexico and they've partnered up with Home2Go. 
So this company and they has worked with them. They've given them accommodation here and they've gone, you come stay here and then you share what a great experience you've had or you share the experience you've had here with your audience in the hope that more people will come and check out this place because people love this content. And when they see it, they're going to go, you know what? They had a great time there. I want to go there too. See how that's really good advertising? So, and the way you know is when you come down here, they've got a link for home to go. So they're going to get something out of that as well. So this is, that's like, that's an affiliate link. And that's how they work with other companies to get sponsored deals. Um, same goes with the blonde abroad here. She's another travel blogger. And sorry, I talk about travel a lot because that's my niche. So <laughs> these are the ones I know. Um, I could try get examples from other platforms, but I wouldn't know them very well. Um, so think about it in terms of your niche and your audience. Um, but it, it, you'll be able to tell when it's sponsored stuff because it's got the same sort of feel to it. You can see they've got product links and things like that. So the Blonde Abroad is the same. She's she's a travel blogger. So you'll find her on Instagram as well. That's her main two platforms. Um, but you'll see that she's worked with all these companies. And what she's got that's really cool now, and you can tell that she's working with companies, is she's actually got a travel shop. So all these companies that she's used over time will have approached her and gone, you know what, I want to give you this if you can promote it on your website. And again, it's cheaper for them. So she has all her favorite travel products and what she would do is she would have affiliate links in this shop. So you go shop now and she, because these companies are relying on her trusting audience and relying on her really big audience, they're getting uh, they're getting something from her promoting their stuff on her website so then what they'll do is they'll give her a cut from the sales that come out of her website so each of these would link to a personal link of her own which then she gets credit for um so that's how that's how bloggers can make money on the site through affiliate programs and affiliate offers and that's something you could consider doing as well if a blog was something you wanted to do. Um, but what I also want to talk to you about is Instagram influencer marketing. And this is something I've done a little bit of. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. But just to give you things to consider that you can actually have success with online and you don't actually need a large audience for. So all you have to do, and you can probably do this for other social media platforms as well if you want to do it for like YouTube or something too, all you have to do is Google the top 15 Instagram influencer marketing platforms and it comes up with all these different options. So they're actual apps that you can use and they help you reach out to brands and they connect you with brands so that you can get paid for the content that you post. And I haven't used most of these I've only used one so that's why I thought I'd give you this so you can test other ones out but the one I want to show you is Tribe um, so this actually launched in Australia but it now is available around the world and that's why I know this one because it was in Australia so that's what I've used so this is the website um, but what I'm actually going to do is show you the app so I'm just going to connect my phone Because basically, you create an account on Tribe. And so you'll be in here, you'll have created an account, you choose the categories for the sort of content that you actually enjoy posting about. And then what they do is they notify you of different companies that are looking for content. So if you, if you like fashion, um, if you like drinks, like there's all these different ones here based on things that I've said that I like. So I like clothes, I like alcohol, I like food, um, arts, that sort of stuff. So say I, I was going out on a Friday night and I go, you know what? I'm going to take a photo tonight of something like this. So they give you a mood board. They tell you what content they want. 
and then you create a post. And based on the amount of followers you have, you get to set your price. So when you have three to 10,000 followers, you can charge 75 to 150 per post. 10 to 25,000, 150 to 220. So 25 to 50, 220 to 350. I've now got over 60,000, so I could move up into the 350 to $500 bracket per post. So as your Instagram account grows, and that's actually something you learn in our more advanced team training, you could then start actually just making money from posting content you would have already posted. So all you do is create a post, you submit it for approval, and then it would come in your feedback section and it would say if the company approves it or declines it. And if they approve it, you get they tell you when you they want you to post it and then they pay you as soon as it's posted. So it's just a really cool way to make a bit of extra money to show you that you can make money online and it's just a cool way to make a bit of extra money on the side and have a bit of fun for doing something you were probably going to post anyway because you work with brands that you want to work with. So it's just a cool way of getting you connected and rewarding you for sharing their content. Um, so yeah, they were just a few things I wanted you to consider. I hope you have enjoyed this model and um, module on establishing yourself online and building your brand and deciding which social media platforms you want to work with. So if there's one key message you take from this, it's to keep it simple. Don't try to do everything at once. Just pick your main few platforms that you feel comfortable on. Establish yourself there. And once you become more confident, then look to grow and expand into other channels. But that's it from me. I really hope you've got something out of this lesson. And I can't wait to work with you even further. Thanks.